So welcome back to our course on simulation and modeling of natural processes. So we continue uh, our chapter on cellular automata modeling. And now we uh, start with a module on uh, lattice gas models. So what are lattice gas models? The idea is to uh, simulate a gas of particle on a fully discrete uh, system. So you have an example on this uh, picture where you have little arrows which uh, represent uh, molecules. Uh, hypothetical molecule with some velocity uh, shown by this arrow. And at uh, each time step, this uh, particle will move according to the direction of the arrows to the next uh, lattice site. Okay? So here I have an example where I took a square lattice. Of course, I could do that uh, in three dimension. Then I would have a cubic lattice. I could also have particle that could move diagonally. That would be also possible. I could also have a lattice which we call uh, hexagonal because there are six possible directions. And the way you build such a lattice is by actually uh, deforming a square lattice with only one diagonal. So what I'm just telling you here is that uh, you may uh, have different type of spatial structure that you want to use, so different way to uh, decompose your space into cells. And uh, basically, we'll consider these two examples uh, here uh, for histo historical reasons. So uh, such a system is called a lattice gas automata, and uh, the abbreviation is LGA. Okay? And uh, as I told you, it's an attempt to have a fully discrete model of uh, fluids. Uh, it's a bit similar to uh, what we do in molecular dynamics, except that uh, it's really an abstract dynamics, and it's uh, uh, discrete in time, in space and in the state space. Um, so uh, it's a representation at some mesoscopic level in which the uh, interactions are very uh, simplified. And I will come back to, to this in, in detail because that's the key of the, of the quality of the model. Uh, but uh, if you do it right, you can also use some mathematical tool to show that this type of discrete dynamics, they really connect to uh, real systems. Okay. We will not do that in detail here, but uh, let me just tell you that you can do some uh, analysis and show whether uh, this type of discrete model, they do or they don't uh, connect to real life. Uh, we'll also briefly see that uh, you can uh, describe a, a gas in, mo in movement, but also a diffusion process or chemical reaction or advection uh, processes. So uh, I will spend some time on the description. You can do mathematical description. You can do of such system. And of course, that directly gives you the way to implement that on a computer. But uh, even though this lattice gas model is of no practical uh, interest, it's really the starting point for our next uh, chapter on lattice Boltzmann model. So that's why we go in uh, quite a bit of detail, because I think it's intuitively easy to understand uh, <coughs> how physics work in this uh, discrete system, and then you will uh, be able to do the step for uh, the lattice Boltzmann approach. So the idea is that in this uh, discrete universe, you have a uh, discrete velocity vi. So before we saw it could be left, right, up, and down. But according to the lattice, you can have a bit more uh, solution. But the key point is that within a time uh, delta t, one time step, you move always from one lattice point to the next. So there's a clear link between the choice of the velocity that you allow in your model and the um, lattice topology, because you need that uh, your current position plus your jump is still a lattice point. Okay? So to describe the system, we introduce uh, what we call occupation number. And we call it ni of rt. can be 1 or 0. And when it's one, it means that you do have a particle at uh, entering the lattice site R at time t with velocity i, vi. Okay? So the, this i is the index of the velocity, which can be left up, right, and down in our simple example. So it means that you have particle entering when this number is one. And if there's no particle uh, along this uh, channel or direction, then it is 0. So it's really an Eulerian description where you sit on a cell and you look whether something 
um, arise or not uh, uh, in this direction and at a given time and at a given position. So to make this easy to implement on a computer, we um, ask that no more than one particle per uh, site and direction can be present. So really that this occupation number is zero or one. It can never be bigger than that. This is uh, formally called exclusion principle. But the main benefit for us is that uh, it means that uh, you can always describe your system at any time with a finite number of bits of information. Okay, you will never need to go more than four bits per site uh, uh, a long time. So the uh, first example of uh, such a lattice gas is due to Hardy Pomo and De Pazzi in the 1971. Actually, it was before the uh, cellar automata went uh, so popular. And the idea is that uh, you do exactly what I told you, but you add some collision rules. So it means that particles, they go straight according to their velocity until they meet potentially another particle. So <coughs> in this first part, you see just a free motion particle that goes in a straight line. This situation means uh, two particles with a head-on collision. They just meet at the same time in the same position with opposite velocity. And the result of this is that the particle, they bounce with a right angle. Okay? They are deviated from their uh, horizontal trajectory to a vertical trajectory. And of course, you have uh, the symmetrical situation where you have a head-on collision along the vertical direction, and then you go horizontally. And any other configuration you can build out of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 particles, uh, except these two, they just uh, uh, are left in unchanged, meaning that the particles, they cross each other without uh, any uh, modification or any uh, actual collision. Uh, why is that so? It means that uh, these rules, uh, they have to implement something which is essential to uh, a gas or fluid which is conservation of mass and momentum. And you can see that here you conserve mass and momentum because you have two particles before collision, you have two particles after collision. You have a zero momentum because they are opposite velocity before collision. You have zero momentum after collision because the particle are still opposite velocity. And so you implement in this uh, interaction two fundamental rules of uh, hydrodynamics, which is uh, mass and momentum conservation. So later on, um, there was another model by Frisch, Haslach, and Pomo, known as the FHP model, which correct many of the weakness of this model. Um, I will just illustrate this on this picture. So first you need uh, um, a lattice with more symmetry than the square lattice. So we go to this hexagonal lattice. And then when you have head-on collision, you have uh, probability to go this way or this way. So you choose that with probability one half in each case. You can also have a three-body collision like this, which uh, end up by bouncing the particle this way. And you can also uh, verify that uh, uh, this is mass and momentum uh, conserving. Okay? Uh, <coughs> for the rest, I will uh, focus on the HPP model because it's, it's easier to introduce the, 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 the math. But uh, first, I just would like to show you what happens if you use this FHP model with a lot of particles and you impose some speed of those particles, let's say from the right boundary. And here you have two obstacles. And so this particle, they have to move inside. And, and you see indeed some patterns which uh, looks like a uh, fluid. So even though it's discrete particle, very simplified dynamic, if there's enough of those particles, you start seeing something which looks like the emergence of uh, uh, <coughs> structure at a, at a large scale like eddies or turbulence and, and things like that. So it, it shows that really there's something to do with fluid dynamics. Okay, so this is the end of my introduction uh, to lattice gases. And the uh, next module will detail a little bit the way the interaction between particles can be described uh, mathematically and in the computer. So thank you for your attention. Back to, back to.